this is the Provoke Prawn and this is the WD Black SN850X and in this video I'm going to show you how to set it up and install it on your motherboard and in your PC. For this video I'm using the Tough Gaming Z790 BTF motherboard which supports PCIe Gen 4 and that's important to bear in mind because this is a PCIe Gen 4 NVMe SSD so if you use a Gen 3 port you won't get the maximum speed out of it. And I'll show you a way to test to make sure you are getting maximum speed later on. You need to make sure that you remove the heat shielding from the motherboard first. And I'd recommend using the top slot on the motherboard. Usually this gives you the fastest speed. It does, however, vary from motherboard to motherboard. And I've done a video separately explaining this in a bit more depth that I'll link to in the description. But in most instances, if you install it up here, you'll make sure it gets the fastest speed and works properly. So you take that cover off, you slot the drive into place, you'll notice there's a little notch on the drive port there where it slots in place, and then you use the little plastic latch to lock it into place. Now, you may find that obviously the drive's upside down in that instance, sometimes it isn't, as I'll show you in a second on this motherboard. Do make sure you peel off any stickers covering the little thermal pads underneath the drive before you slot it into place. But here you'll see with an SN850 that we're slotting the drive in the right way up. It doesn't really matter though. You can't push the drive in the wrong way round, so bear that in mind. The little plastic notch in the port means that you can't put it in the wrong way around. Now, you may be told by other people that peeling the stickers off your drive is important. Actually, I'd suggest not to do this. I've done testing to show that it doesn't improve things. In fact, it may make it worse. Those stickers are often thermally conductive and will help with heat dissipation. Also, you'll find warnings about voiding the warranty if you remove them. So don't do what you can see me doing here. I literally just did this for testing purposes. What you should do, though, is remove the stickers from the heat shielding that comes with the motherboard. Any thermal pads that are covered there, then replace that heat shielding back onto the board. This helps dissipate a significant amount of heat and to keep your drive running cool and at optimum speeds. So it's well worth doing that. For other motherboards, you might find the installation is ever so slightly different. So some older boards might not have that little plastic latch, for example. This NZXT board, for example, has a screw on it instead. So you need an M2 screw. The drive slots in in much the same way, but when you go to push it down, you'll find there's a standoff there and you need an M2 screw, which should come with your motherboard. If you don't have those screws, I'll link to some that you can buy separately in the description because unfortunately they don't come with the drive. You'll secure the screw into place and then put the shielding back over the top and then you're done. So as you can see, the installation is fairly straightforward as long as you remember to remove the stickers from the motherboard and from any heat shielding and to replace that as well. Slot those down and secure them with the screws that they came with initially and that will then keep things nice and cool. You may find quite different heat shielding from board to board. This one for example is quite a bit taller. You've already seen quite a chunky one on the other motherboard earlier on as well and they are important to you so make sure you do. And now I'm going to dive into Windows and show you how to make sure the drive runs properly and is recognized and then to speed test it as well to make sure you're getting the right speeds out of it. Now if you've built your gaming PC and it looks something like this but the WD Black SN850X was the only drive that you were putting into the system then you might be wanting to install Windows on it. So first of all you want to get into the BIOS. It should automatically do it but if it doesn't just mash the delete key on your keyboard once you've turned your PC on and you should then enter the BIOS. In the BIOS you should hopefully then see the drive listed in the boot menu as in one of the drives that it will boot from. And you should also see it listed on the drives that are seen by the system. So you can see it's also got a SATA drive in here and another drive in this list that we can access. For installing Windows, you'll need another machine that you can use to do the Windows 11 media creation tool. I've done a separate video on how to do this on your phone if you've not got a spare machine to run it on. But essentially, this is a tool that you'd then put onto a thumb drive and the USB drive can then go into the new system to allow you to then install Windows onto SN850X. So this is a pretty straightforward system. Basically, a software that you'd run, download it from Microsoft, run the tool, install it onto the drive, and then we're going to put that into our new system and get on with installing it. Once you've put this bootable media into your PC, you should find that when you restart, it's automatically recognized. You've inserted it into the motherboard, 
and then restart and you should find that it just boots into the creation tool but if it doesn't you can go into the boot order priority here and make sure that the drive is selected as the main one or select it and run from it because otherwise it's trying to boot from something else and it's not working properly this is essentially telling it to run through this process so you do this and then it should load essentially it's running from the usb stick at this point you go through and you follow the on-screen instructions select from the drop downs the options that you want and keep going until you're going about installing it on the drive you then basically installing windows onto the sn850x and you need to, at some point when the PC restarts, remove that USB drive and then it will boot into Windows properly. We are selecting the options of Windows 11 Home, accepting that, then go for custom install, Windows only, find the drive, click new to create the relevant partition on that and set it up. And then just keep clicking next, go through and start installing Windows. Now we'll take some time to do this and obviously we also need to make sure we get the updates once we get into there but you go through click that and then wait be patient and then what you will find is eventually once it gets to the part where it's about to finish you'll need to unplug the usb drive that you plugged in for when it reboots otherwise it will try and use this again so just once you get to the end of the process here when it says it's about to restart just keep an eye on it because when it goes through that restart process, as you can see, the bar's filling up here. Take that drive out and then allow it to reboot. And it should just reboot into the final stages of the Windows installation without the need for that drive. And then you should just find you're in Windows and away. But alternatively, if this is just an additional drive to your system, I want to show you how to get it to be recognized in Windows. So hit the start button and then we're looking for disk management. So type disk management and then look for create and format hard disk partitions. This tool is disk management, which essentially will allow you to recognize the drive in Windows and to format it. Because sometimes you've installed it, you run your PC, You've got into Windows, and although it was recognized by the BIOS, it's not recognized by Explorer, so you can't use it. So you have to run the disk management tool to initialize the drive. You should then see it recognized with a black line on it instead of a blue line. You need to right-click on it and then assign a new simple volume to this. What we're doing is essentially formatting the driver so it's usable in Windows. So right-click, click new simple volume, and then go through these steps so assign it a drive letter. In this case, it's automatically assigned to E, but you could choose something else and then give it a name just so you know what it is. So obviously I'm going to use WD Black SN850X here just so you can see that in Windows and then leave the other settings and just click next and finish. You should find then once it's formatted that it appears in Windows Explorer so you can then access that drive. So if you just go over to this PC, you can see the drive here alongside the other ones I've got in the system. So this is the way to get it to pop up if it hasn't appeared already. This is one way to access the disk management tool. There's also another way to do it if you find you can't access that for some reason. So on this PC, right click, click show more options and then click manage. This should then open up another tool which basically allows you to do the same thing. This is the computer management tool instead. And under there you'll find there's a storage section with disk management on it. From there you can obviously repeat the same process I just showed you. Find the drive, assign a new simple volume, format it. Or you can just access it to format it here in future if you need to. And you can see you can also change the drive letter there if you want to. The next thing to do is to make sure it's running at the right speed. So I recommend a few different tools to this, which I'll link to in the description down below. One of these is Hardware Monitor, which you can see here shows the temperatures for the drive, the activity on it, and the read-write speed. The other tool is Crystal Disk Mark, which you can use to benchmark and test the drive. So go through and select the drive list here, so E obviously, and make sure you're following the same settings as me. You want nine runs, 64 gigabytes, do the settings, set it to NVMe SSD, and then click all. This is essentially doing some synthetic testing on the drive to make sure it's running at the speed it should be. And this is useful to make sure that you've set it up correctly in your system and all the settings are correct on your BIOS and other things. You should see when it's happening, the hardware monitor settings show that it's running. You can see the top speeds and the current read write speeds of the drive as it's going through this test process. But a crystal disk mark will also give you a final result 
of what it should look like. So I'm seeing 6,945 megabytes a second. Now, really, we should be getting up to 7,300, but this is close to that because that's up to, so it's the maximum that you can get. So this is actually not too bad. If you were seeing 3,000 megabytes per second, that might be a bigger problem that shows there's an issue with the drive because you've got it in the wrong slot or there's something wrong with your motherboard. You maybe got it in a Gen 3 slot, or perhaps something else is causing it an issue. I've done a separate video explaining this in a bit more depth, but I quickly want to show you some other things to look at. One of them is in Hardware Info 64. In this tool, you can get access to data on the drives. So if you go into this section here, you can see the drives listed in here. Find a WD Black SN850X and click on that. You can then see at a glance information about it and whether it's basically running at the right speeds. What we're looking for here is to make sure that it says PCIe 4 and that it's also getting the maximum link bandwidth for 4x. So you want it Gen 4 and four times. So it's got four lanes at Gen 4 and it should be running at the right speed then. So I'm confirming this is definitely getting the maximum speed that it should do from the CPU. That's one thing to do. The next thing that might help the situation if you find it's not running fast enough is to download Western Digital's dashboard from their website. This is a tool that you can use specifically to update the firmware and do other things with this drive. So you can see here, if we click into the drive here, there's a notification that there's an update for firmware available. I'd recommend doing this. It will make sure that it runs properly. Also, you can see the interface speed here as well. So what I just showed you in hardware info, you can see it here. It's Gen 4 and it's got four lanes. If you saw Gen 3, for example, you'd know that you then had it in the wrong slot on your motherboard. Update the firmware and then we're going to try again with the speed testing. You'll notice a few other things in here. One of them is gaming mode. So there's actually a gaming mode setting in here, which you can see they suggest makes gaming a bit more efficient and is designed specifically for gamers. So if it's automatically detecting you launching a game, it'll improve performance. I don't know how much difference this makes, but you might want to try it yourself and see if it makes any difference to your gaming experience. So that's one of the things you can get with this dashboard. The other one under the tools section is a variety of tools in here for optimizing the speed of the drive and you can see down here there is a couple of options one of which is enable write caching and the other ones disable windows write cache buffer flushing turn that on and you might find that this makes an improvement to your speed for read write speeds now i wouldn't worry too much about getting right up to 7000 300 megabytes a second if you're getting very high in the 6000s you're still getting a decent speed out of it and good performance hopefully all these tips you found useful if you have thanks very much for watching let me know in the comments down below and check out the description because you should find other related videos which might give you some useful insights into nvme drives thanks for watching you've made it right to the end of the video you brilliant legend you if you've enjoyed it click that subscribe button give me a thumbs up and drop me a comment down below if you've got any questions. If you really enjoyed it, consider joining the channel and see the benefits of doing so. Check out these other videos. You might well find them interesting or useful. And most importantly, have a great life.